Uh, let's see. And so this is chapter 14 or 17 warm up. We're going to start on page 53A and um, go through 53C and so that we do the extra chapter 17 extra practice also. Okay. Now, before we get started on this, I want to tell you a couple things that people have been confused about. First of all, when a problem asks how much is expected or what's the expected amount, that also is the same thing as asking, you know, what's the mean of the problem. So you can keep those two things in mind. What's, what's expected is the same thing as what's the mean. Now, there are formulas for um, binomial and geometric expected. So let's go ahead and recall those. If a problem is binomial, then you know that it is a s out of a set number of items. For example, if 150 people go donate blood, what is the expected number that will be type B? Okay, that kind of thing. So binomial to be at a set number. And that formula is N times P. That one also has a standard deviation formula, and this is on the formula chart. So these two formulas are on the formula chart, okay? So this one on the formula chart, which I will let you, you can always use a formula chart. So I'll put those in your hands tomorrow when we take the quiz. I'll give them to you. They're my laminated copies, and I'll show you where those are. Now, if we do the geometric, that one is not on the formula chart. So you have to know it deep in your heart because it is not on the formula chart. So this one, the wording that goes with this is, how many are you going to go until you get one? How many are you gonna, how many do you expect, how many things do you expect to do or to find until you get one? And that formula that is not on the formula chart is one over P. There is no standard deviation formula for geometric. All right, okay, so with those things said, let's go ahead and go on to our problems. So our first one says, um, we're dealing with type B blood, and 11% of the U.S. population has that, so that's what we expect to be in all communities. All right, so we're going to see. So that would mean um, how many, if, they, if I send seniors down to the gym and they start giving blood, how many do I expect to go until they get a type B blood person? So that's going to be the geometric 1 over P. That's 9.09. .09. Do not round that to nine because this is, on average, how many do you expect to happen? So keep that as the decimal. On average, I expect to have to examine about 9.09 .09 students. Okay, number two is one where it identifies exactly where the tenth, where the um, type B donor happens. What's the probability that the first type B donor is in the tenth spot. So it's telling you the order. So it is defining the order such that the first nine are not type B and the last one, the tenth one, is. So this one is type B. Okay, then you multiply those out. Okay, number three is saying that out of 20... We want exactly two. So exactly this, exactly that, PDF is where it's at. Exactly this and exactly that, PDF is where it's at. So this one is going to be that we have to do binomial PDF. You have to show this work. So notice this section right here is the work that has to be shown. And then the part in your calculator you don't have to show but here's what you would put in your calculator. Binomial PDF of 20.112. So that's what would go in your calculator. 
All right, so that's exactly this, exactly that. PDF is where it's at. All right, but if you take a look at number four, we want to find the probability that we have at least two. So that's a series of items. That's a sequence of items from two up to ten. So two up to ten is what we want. So look at the formula. You sh must show this work right here. X is greater than or equal to two. 10 choose 2, up to 10 choose 10. Okay, so that's the formula, that, that sequence of formulas that you use. Now let's talk about how you calculate it. All right, so if you take a look at this, I want from 2 up to 10. But if you do not have a TI Inspire calculator, your calculator does not have the ability to compute an upper section of sequence. Your calculator, if it's TI-83 or 84, cannot compute this upper section. Your calculator only can compute from the bottom. So the zero and the one is what your calculator can give you with binomial C df because that computes the zero and the one together but that's what I don't want so how do I handle that one minus one. good so I'm gonna do in my calculator one minus the binomial CDF of 10.11 one here I'm taking off up to and including one. That takes off zero successes and one success. So that answer is 0.303. So is your calculator 10 plus 1 minus 1? Yes, a TI Inspire can compute from a midpoint up. <coughs> but none of us have that here. So we're all having to do the other way. Okay? okay? All right questions there. Okay, number five. So here now, guess what? We are told out of 150 donors. So think about it this way. I go send 150 seniors, well, 150 seniors throughout the day go get their blood drawn, okay? That's how many signed up and went down to the blood drive. So therefore, if Alito has the same type B blood rate as the rest of the country, that's 11%. So how many type B blood people should be showing up today? That is binomial. What makes this problem binomial? Who's set Good. We are told a set number of donors. We are told 150 donors. That means N is 150. So that's why we can then find out that on average, I expect, that's the mean. On average, I expect there to be 16 and a half people that go down there to, that have type B blood. And with this standard deviation, so I use the formula for both of those. So this standard deviation kind of tells me how much I can be off from 16 and a half and be okay. All right, because see, take a look at this. The samples should land in the normal model. If Alito has 11% type B blood like the rest of the country, then we should have something like this. We should have around 16 and a half seniors that go down there that have type B blood. And if you take away a standard deviation, if you take away two standard deviations, that makes this number right here 8.48. Okay. Now, do you see? Do you see all these samples in here? Do you see all this area? These numbers are happening because of sampling variability. Here's a sample of 150, and how many they got in it. Here's a sample of 150, and how many they got. And here's a sample of 150, and how many they got. Sometimes you get a little bit more. Sometimes you get a little bit less than 1650 or 16 and a half. Why? Why? Because of sampling variability. <clears throat> From year to year, 
I'm going to have a little bit different samples. Okay, but if we get something more than two standard deviations away, I'm going to think, holy moly, we are weird. We are very different than the rest of the country in that we don't have 11% type B blood. So that's what this question is asking. Number six, surprised by the low number of type B blood donors. So we had a really low number. We called into question, we think 11% might be too high for our area. Did we talk about this yesterday? I can't remember. You know that, you know, Alito is kind of unique school-wise in that, um, you know, not completely, but overall, we're quite a bit more homogeneous and not as diversified as a lot of um, areas in, in the country. Would you agree with that statement? Okay. So if we are not as diversified as a lot of the country, then we don't have those cultural differences. And that means those actually do make up physical genetic differences in our bodies. So that can change, you know, the, the type, the difference of prevalences of those types of bloods. So perhaps Alito doesn't have 11% type B blood because we are so homogeneous and don't really kind of have as much of those. So here's what the, hap what it happened, what the question asks. How many type B blood donors would it take to convince you that this estimate is too high for Alito? What, means, what, what makes you think that 11% is too high for Alito? Two standard deviations below. So look at what I did right here. Do you see this information? I did 16 and a half minus two standard deviations. And I came up with 8.84. So if I sent 150 seniors down there to get their blood drawn and less than 8.84 of them came back, we would have a sample way down here in outlier land and if we have a sample down here in outlier land then I'm thinking that this thing that you say we're supposed to have we don't really have we don't really have 16 and a half or 11 percent type B blood in Alito I think we really have something less okay so see what I wrote here if we get a really known, low number of type B blood in the blood drive, then 11% might be too high for our area. More than two standard deviations below the mean is unusually low. So that's kind of some explanation stuff. So if I had less than eight or nine people, so if I had eight people or less, eight people or less, I would get suspicious that Alito does not have 11% type B blood like the rest of the country. Okay, questions there. All right, now let's go to this other warm-up. So here's a secondary warm-up. Here we go. I actually want to skip problem number one for just a minute because the rest of this page is pretty straightforward and then number one can be done in a few different ways. So let's skip that one and do this. Um, the rest of these ones on this page, numbers two through five, you should be proficient at. If you cannot do problems two through five on this page, then you do not know the basics of chapter 17. Okay? So this, so this page, so let's go through these, and then we'll go back to number one. So number two is about 80% of people who get exposed to the flu virus actually contract it. So in other words, 80% that are exposed to the flu virus get it. Okay? So the first question is, what what's the probability that no one will contract the flu? This is the probability of not getting it, and I need all six people to not get it. So that's 0.2 to the sixth power, which is 0.000064. It's about 0%. So if you have a family of six exposed to the flu, there's pretty much a 0% chance that none of them are going to get it. <laughs> 
Okay? All right. Now, B says all of them get the flu. So that's point eight, and all six of them. So that's to the sixth power. All of them get it. Okay? Now, I have to say that this right here, this point eight, I personally think this is a little iffy on the math because I'm thinking if, say, six people go to church, they're exposed to somebody who gets the flu, they're all sitting there by somebody who has the flu, okay, or gets the flu, then, you know, what if they go home and the mom gets the flu, okay? Well, then the other ones might not have got it from the first exposure, but then now right. that the mom's gotten it, We're then now da 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 So what is this assuming? Just FYI, what is this assuming is happening from um, person to person about the probability of getting the flu? That no one's, like, spreading as they get it. Okay, yes. It the yes, that this is just talking about from the main person, and they are all exposed at the same time. And, finally, the probability that somebody's getting it is not changing. It is staying the same from person to person. So what is that called when somebody it's staying the same from person to person? Independence, okay. So it is making the assumption that that probability of getting the flu is the same from person to person. Okay. Which I don't know if that's how realistic that is in a, in a real life, real world situation. But anyway, so if you were a medical person, you would want to consider that if you were making a report. C says exactly two get the flu. So that's exactly two. PDF, the, or exactly this, or exactly that, PDF is where it's at. So this is a binomial PDF of six choose two. So six choose two, point eight to the two, point two to the four, and you compute it with binomial PDF. All right, D, at least two. If there's at least two, then how many are contracting the flu? Two for up to six. Okay, so that's a sequence of two up to six. And we discussed this earlier. Our calculator does not have the ability to um, section off two to six. What can our calculator do? Take off the bottom zero and one. So 1 minus the accumulation of the bottom section, 6, comma, 0.8, comma, 1. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, look, E, how many would you expect to get the flu? And with what standard deviation? So how many of the six members in the family? So why is this considered binomial? Because it's a set number of people in the family, out of six in the family. So we've got an N. So that's why it's six times 0.8 and with this standard deviation. All right, moving on, number three. So this one is saying we got some people. So let's say people go to the doctor to get their chest x ray, and when they, they have, who all have tuberculosis. But of the ones that have tuberculosis, the technicians are only able to detect it in about 88% of those, okay? Maybe they're not progressed enough or whatever, but when they take the chest x-ray or whatever it is that they're looking at, they're only able to detect it in about 88% of those that have it. So, what if the, each specialist can detect 88% of the time? What's the probability that exactly three of the specialists detect the presence of tuberculosis. Exactly this, exactly that. PDF is where it's at. So this is binomial PDF of four specialists choose exactly three of them to detect tuberculosis. Okay. All right. Number four does have one little tricky thing in it that makes it different from what we've seen in the past, but once you get past, once you identify that, then it's all the same. So look here at number four. This is pharmaceutical lab claims that a drug it produces causes serious side effects in 20 out of every 1,000 people. So that right there 
is the rate at which people get serious side effects. So you have to like turn that into your percent. So that's what I have right here. The probability of a serious side effect is 20 over 1,000. And so that is 0 0.02. Now that you have that, you should be able to do this problem because it says, hey, the lab examines 15 people. What's the problem? That exactly three of them have serious side effects. Exactly this, exactly that. PDF is where it's at. PDF is where it's, where it's at. There you go. Okay, very good. PDF is where it's at. That's right. Okay. So there's how you do that one. And the last one on this page, but we'll go back to number one. So this one says, how many items do you expect to pick until you get one? So that's going to be a geometric, and it's going to be one, out of, 1 over P. 1 over P, 1 over 0.7. Okay, real quickly, let's go up to number one. The reason I'm doing this one last on this page is because it can actually be done in a few sev uh, several different ways. So I didn't want to get you confused until we had a solid handling. So here we go. In order to make a guarantee, no more the box can have no more than one defect. We got 12 items in the box and 0.03 chance of a defect per item. Okay, so if you can have no in order to have the guarantee on the box no more than one can be defective. So how many is allowed to be defective? So in order for the guarantee to hold, there has to be no defects or what? Or is a plus or what? One defect. If there is two or more, then we're bad. No go. The guarantee does not hold. Yes, ma'am? Um, so if the question asked for, what's the probability that you are able to make a guarantee? Then it would be that. The guarantee is the probability that X is less than 1. And so then you can binomial CDF 12.03 up to and including one. But the point is, this question asks something else. This question says, what's the probability that they fail to make the guarantee? So you make the guarantee if you just have zero and one defective. Failing to make the guarantee means you had two to 12 defective. That's why it's the opposite. So you just had to read carefully as to what you were looking for. So making the guarantee is this probability, which is 0.9514. So if making the guarantee is 0.9514, what's failing to make it? Yeah, 1 minus that, which is going to be 0.0486, okay? So failing to make it is the opposite of it, 1 minus that. This should be there, yet yeah, you're at. So guarantees are X is less than or equal to one. Defective are ones greater than one, okay? So there's a couple different ways to think about that one, so there you go. All right, we gotta move on. Next page. Okay, number six. I think I have wrong. So let's see what you think. Suppose that the probability of an exam being scored a 5 is 0.1. What's the probability that the grader has to score exactly 7 before finding the score of a 5? So I, I think this means that the first 7 are not a 5. And then the eighth one is. Yeah, that was a tricky one. See, obviously I fell for it in the past. 
This is geometric because it is telling you where the first winner is. The winner is in the eighth place. That's what makes it geometric. Okay, so I don't know what that answer is, but it's 4.78%. Okay, thank you. Now, I had questions in my other classes. They said, What's, what is, how would you know, what would it be like if it was binomial? Okay, so I'm going to tell you. If this problem was worded in a binomial fashion, here's how it would be worded. It would say something like this. What's the probability of exactly one score of a five amongst, you know, eight um, exams? If it was to be done in a binomial fashion, this is the question that would have been asked. What's the probability that exactly one? Because that can place the one, one winner anywhere um, in the five, amongst the eight. But this question defined, you have to score seven, and then you get a winner. Okay, number seven. You have to score at most three to find the winner of a five, I mean, the person who got a five. This is a true percent, by the way. There is about 10% in the nation that get fives on the AP test, AP stats test. So this means you have to score at most three of them. So that means you could miss, miss no, not a five, not a five. Ding, 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 it's a five. But it's at most three. So that means you could also find it on the what? <clears throat> or you could find the winner on the second one. Or you could find the winner on the first one. So here is one where you could find the winner on the first or the second or the third. You can compute that by hand or you could do a geometric CDF of 0.1 up to the third spot. Eight, how many tests do you expect the grader to score before getting one? That's one over point. Okay, and then this is wrong here. These are different answers. Um, actually, yeah, these are wrong because they were different questions. So how are we doing on time? Because we had a... Yikesies. Okay, let me show you 10 real quick, and then I'll just do whatever. Actually, this is part D is right. So there is number 9D, and then there is number 10, A and B. Okay, and so I'll go back and I'll show you 9. We'll go ahead and do those. Let me insert. I got the picture of it. Um, <laughs> Probably. Probably. Who knows? Okay. All right, so if you would like to do number nine with me, here we go. Um, what's the probability? Okay, so, hey, if you're a telemarketer, then the probability that you get a, a one that's completed is 0 0.084. I used to be one, by the way. Suppose you have 280, a telemarketer back in 1992 when they first started being telemarketers. I called up to New York and I asked them um, if they wanted call waiting. This before there were cell phones even. Okay, here we go. What's the probability that more than 50, oh, this is an interesting one, guys. Probability that X is greater than 50 means what do you want in your sequence? You want 51 and then up to 280. So look here, guys. This means whenever you do this problem, the way you compute this problem is 1 minus the accumulation. If I want 51 and above, what do I take off? Take off. If I want 51 and above, take off the bottom 50. So you just pay attention to what do you want, and then you know to take off whatever is below that. So I'm going to take off 280, 0 0.084, and 50. Okay? 
This one is just an exactly, so that's just a 280 choose 50, 45 problem. And then how about this? Not more than 15. That means X is less than or equal to 15. Okay, the bells are off. We do not need to subtract from one. That one is just from zero up to 15. So the way you would calculate that is this. Up to and including 15. Okay, so there's how you would do those.